Tarod v. Mahomes was one of one, two, three, four matchups going into week two of black starting quarterbacks. Uh, and there's a total, I believe, of 10, 10 uh, black yeah. starting quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Um, what does that mean to you in 2020? You know, we, we talk a lot about the fact that there are so few head coaches, uh, both in the NFL and for that matter, in the NBA, not to mention college sports across the board. So few black head coaches. Black ownership is still the uh, uncharted frontier for the most part. Um, yeah. What does that mean to you have that number, uh, 10 black quarterbacks? Well, I, I, it, it's significant. It, it means it means a lot to me, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell you why, uh, and, and where I'm gonna tell you why, and I'm gonna tell you where I want to see it go. Now I remember, like yesterday, I was watching Nightline. Now what was I doing up that late? I don't know, but I was watching Nightline <laughs> when Al Campanis uh, told Ted Koppel that blacks do not. He said it. Blacks do not have the necessities to be managers in Major League Baseball. He just said it yeah. flat out. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm a yeah. baseball fan. What do you mean? I don't have necessities. Look, I, I, I could probably manage a baseball team. I'm not even that old. Come on. Now. You know, if you love the game and you got some intelligence and you, and you can lead people, of course you have the necessities. And so Ted Koppel went back at him and said, wait, excuse me, Mr. Campanis, did you just say what I thought you said? He did. Campanis was fired. Disgraced. But the industry didn't catch up to it. The industry still didn't, didn't right that wrong. And so it is still a thing. Black managers in baseball is still a thing. Uh, now, you talk about black quarterbacks. When Doug Williams led the Washington football team uh, to a victory in the Super Bowl over the Broncos, uh, it was a huge thing in the black community. Uh, I was not a Washington fan, but I was a Doug Williams fan because that meant a lot to me. I had heard all the excuses. I would heard all these comments and all the shade thrown at black quarterbacks over the years. And so to see him in that position uh, filled me with a great deal of pride. So where, what does it mean to me now, Michael Smith? I'm glad yeah. that a lot of people coming up, you know, teenagers might be watching this and saying, hey, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? I've seen lots of black quarterbacks. You know, yeah. I've seen great black quarterbacks. I've seen backups. Uh, I've seen journeymen, like all over. It, it's not a big deal. Well. I'm glad that quarterbacks are being entrusted to just be like everybody else. Like, it, you don't say about white quarterbacks, can you lead my franchise? Can you be my franchise savior? No, it's like, hey, you're a quarterback. You happen to be white. We're gonna, you're going to play the position. I'm glad the same yeah. thing is happening for those quarterbacks. But what? here's the next step. I want to see it happen in ownership, general managers, and coaching. It's still a problem is still a problem when it comes to coaches. We've seen black coaches. Well, 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 but well, remember, ownership is a wealth. Ownership is a wealth issue, and without ownership, general manager and front office. About general managers, it's, though. It's, 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 that's an extension of ownership. That's an extension of ownership. Um, because you know, and on that on that note, I'll have a quick tangent. A lot of people, you Go know, ahead. talk about Colin Kaepernick, and I, I long ago stopped being upset that Colin Kaepernick isn't playing as much as I'm upset that the dynamic of NFL ownership is as such they can lock out, you know, Colin Kaepernick, that they can effectively right. end his career because there are no owners that are willing to, you know, uh, sign him and deal with what they think would be the backlash from it. Um, but going in terms of coaches, there's still, there's still, not enough coaches, black coaches on the offensive side of the ball. Um, because a lot of times when owners are looking, and especially in this day and age, owners are looking for head coaches, they look to the offensive side of the ball. And that pipeline, for some reason, seems to be a little clogged when it comes to quarterback coaches and play callers. Somebody told me this recently, too, when it comes to um, black general managers. They get, uh, they get elevated. They don't get hired. Mm. And, and, our, and the a distinction being a lot of times they rise through the ranks of the organization as opposed to being brought from outside the organization, which comes with a different level of uh, identification and commitment. But going back to quarterbacks so for a second, it's not just that there are 10 black quarterbacks. It's that they're among the best quarterbacks, by and large. Whether you're talking about Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, the last two MVPs, 
We just started off the show talking about maybe the best quarterback right now is Russell Wilson, uh, Deshaun Watson, Cam Newton's having a renaissance in New England. Kyler Murray looks like he'll be the next second year quarterback to take a huge leap. Um, Dak Prescott made history yesterday, throwing for 400 yards and rushing for three touchdowns. So it's not just that there are black quarterbacks populating the league, or not just there are black starting quarterbacks, but they're excelling and really ushering in a quarterback revolution because the style of play also has a lot to do with it. A style of play traditionally uh, reserved, if you will, or traditionally associated with black quarterbacks is now the dominant style of play for NFL quarterbacks. I'm talking about dual threats. Uh, it's, 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 it's more, much more acceptable or much more popular, shall we say, than it used to be where a lot of times, you know, a running quarterback would be frowned upon. You have to win from the pocket. Well, you know, running quarterbacks are now the norm. Shout out to Josh Allen, by the way, uh, up in Buffalo, yeah. holding it down. But the, the thing but I Mike, do want to say about that, though, is but we're not, we're not so far removed. It's not, I don't know that we're beyond black quarterback yet because it wasn't that long ago when Hall of Fame general manager Bill Polian was suggesting that Lamar Jackson change positions after a Heisman Trophy uh, and, a, and a prolific career at Louisville. It wasn't that long yeah. ago. And again, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, you know, talk about just trolls on Twitter or idiots, but it wasn't that long no. ago where I think a superintendent in Houston questioned Deshaun Watson's intelligence for right. a decision he made at the end of the game. So I, I think we're, I think we're past the point of looking at a quarterback and necessarily judging him strictly by the color of his skin. Uh, but because now if you do that, you get called on it. You know, you, you, you get, you know, people are coming after you if you dare subscribe to uh, racist or dis discriminatory uh, stereotypes or tropes. But we also know that now when we're talking about being the face of a league, that comes with a whole another set of issues because, you know, guys like Deshaun and Patrick Mahomes, of course, took part in, a, in the Black Lives Matter video in the offseason. Now that next frontier, at least as a black quarterback, is, okay, are you seen uh, as somebody who can carry the league from a brand and from a reputation and from a, from a uh, you know, uh, in the face of the league standpoint? And it seems like those, those guys are up for it, and, and we'll see how, if society well, is see, truly but... ready to embrace black quarterbacks in that way. Well, see, that, that, that's, that's, that's what part of my problem is, uh, Mike, and it's part of the wrestling that I have. That's why I was making all these faces uh, when you were talking. You, 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 you're talking well, okay? You make a lot of sense. But I'm just imagining some of the things that, that you're saying and why it has to be this case, uh, be this way. So that's why we're not, far, we're not so far beyond it. We're not to the point where we should be. Like, if I'm a quarterback, I'm black, don't ask me if I can lead your community, uh, your community team. I, I'm great in PR. I'm great in this. I'm doing that. No, I'm a quarterback. We don't say that about all quarterbacks. Hey, this guy is going to be, uh, he's going to lead your state. He's going to be the governor. He's going to do all these wonderful things. He's going to be exceptional, the best quarterback you've ever seen. No, what you're saying is he's good enough to play the position. We're going to hand a position to him, and we're going to try to build a good team around him. Like, why, why do we need this? black exceptionalism just to have an opportunity to have to play that position. And so yeah. if, if you go back a little bit, that's why exclusionary practices are just so maddening. Uh, whether we're talking about black people, whether we're talking about women, whether we're talking about anybody who has been shut out or anybody who has been pushed back where they belong. Okay, if you go back to MLB and, and Jackie Robinson breaking the color line. Uh, was it a surprise? Like, people are like, want to say, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Like, we have a black player in baseball, and he's good. He's a rookie of the year, and he's an MVP. Of course. Nobody, like, we didn't think we weren't good enough. You did. Yeah. It, it's not a surprise that Jackie Robinson was an MVP, and Larry, Do Larry Doby, and Don Newcomb, and Roy Campanella, and all these people, all these talented players, and Hank Aaron and on and on and on. That's not a surprise to me. So when you say, hey, look at these black quarterbacks, they're some of the best in the league. No kidding. That's the, that's the problem. The problem is that we're looking at it like, oh, wow, they can play. We know that. We know they can play. Why didn't you know that? And it's funny that you mentioned Bill Polian. Sure, he got caught on it. 
But what organization drafted Lamar Jackson at number 32? One of the first organizations to have a black general manager, the Baltimore Ravens and Ozzie Newsom. Is that a coincidence? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. So we still, um, we, we, we got a level to get to. Yeah, definitely got a long way to go. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.